Hey, I'm Folygon, and in this video, I am going to be doing a little daily warm-up doodle here. Uh, at least it's the morning for me. So, um, yeah, I'm going to spend maybe about 30 minutes here just kind of warming up, uh, sculpting a quick head. Uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get started here. Um, and just start with some basic shapes. Uh, I have kind of a general idea for a few shapes I would like to play around with here. But I don't want to be too specific, otherwise I won't let the creativity flow, right? Or something like that. That sounds like something an artist might say. <laughs> uh, okay, so in terms of just basic idea, I'm thinking like an older character, maybe? Kind of a little bit of a hunched back or, or something like that, and I'll even repurpose the head for the body. Look at that. Genius. Big brain time. And it also helps repeat the shape language, which is pretty cool. Uh, when I'm just kind of warming up and experimenting like this, I'll just kind of reuse a lot of shapes. I don't really mind. Actually, kind of makes it a little easier, <laughs> if I'm being completely honest. So if you're looking for ways to kind of work a little faster, you can always reuse some shapes like so. Uh, so pretty much everything I've used, other than the neck, has just been the, the same shape, just duplicated and played around with. And that's actually a pretty cool nose shape. Maybe we could... Uh, it's like a, it's a little boxy and hooked. Make it a little flat on the bottom. Uh, I kind of like this sharp head shape, but I, I might do some stuff here to make it a little more... Not anatomical. That's not really my goal. My goal is to just get something down quick here, make something fun, and work a little quick as well. I think um, during the warm-up stage, or warm-up stage, when you are warming up, I, I think you shouldn't be really precious about your, your brush strokes or anything else that you're doing. It's okay to be messy, it's okay to kind of experiment, play around, have some fun. Let happy accidents happen, as Bob Ross might say. So we'll start getting a little more messy here as I continue forward. Uh, we could probably use some eyes at this point. I'll go ahead and insert some of those. And the bigger the eye, the better, is what I always say. It's not entirely true, but in this case, big buggy eyes. Heck yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go a little transparency. Maybe line that up a little bit better. Like I said, kind of an older character. It's almost, it's almost feeling a little bit like a bird. But old people somewhat resemble birds on occasion, right? Maybe a little bit. Ah, we're going to need some ears as well. Uh, luckily, I have an ear that I like to just cheat with. I've made so many ears. I'll just grab one of those off of here. I'll grab my tune ear. And just kind of get that right on my geometry. Kind of looking a little goblinoid. Maybe we could make a goblin character. So I like uh, going into these things with just enough direction to get me started. And then uh, as things kind of happen here, just kind of go with the flow. And uh, kind of see what kind of fun can come of it. I think um, if you go in with too specific of a goal, well, you're just going to end up kind of getting out of that warm-up stage and more so into actually creating something uh, a little too exact. Definitely not the goal during the uh, during a warm-up. Just kind of work fast, don't think too hard. And the rest will just kind of happen naturally. This is really just a great practice in general to get some more hours under your belt as well. Something that I am always a huge proponent of. Sculpting, right? You want to get better at sculpting? Sculpting is the best way to do that. A lot of talk about, you know, drawing and all sorts of other stuff, but hey, the best way to get better at a thing is to do that thing. <laughs> I know, it sounds crazy, right? But uh, you'd be surprised by how many people think otherwise. All right, now we're getting some actual nose shapes. Beautiful. Look at that beautiful schnoz. All right. Schnoz is looking good. 
Maybe some nostrils. How do I make nostrils? Probably with a quick mask. Maybe something like that. All right. Beautiful, beautiful schnoz. And then when things get stretched, I always activate a little thing called Dynamesh just to get my geometry feeling a little bit more uh, consistent or polygons more consistently distributed. Okay, so I kind of like the uh, general vibe of what we've got going on here. And it's maybe been about five or six minutes. Not too long. So we've, you know, got a really good base here already for, for just a quick little sculpt here. So in terms of the main shape here for the head, he's very, uh, very kind of fore, uh, forehead heavy. That's the term I'm looking for. So I'm thinking I'm going to reduce that some. Kind of pull back on that. Maybe make it a little less tall. There we go. That's kind of what I was looking for. I like that. I still like the, the bulging eyes, but maybe, maybe not quite as much. Some really cool shapes happening there around the brow that I'm actually really liking. Again, kind of, for the most part, on accident. I did not set out to make this exact shape. Just started to form slowly and kind of built it up from there. Looking a little more angry, maybe. I'll stick with it. Old people are just angry in general, as we know. <laughs> uh, and then another kind of feature I might like to try here. It's just like a, a really sharp angle here for the kind of like point of the cheekbone. I really like that, I think that's cool. We stylized artists love our sharp angles. Gotta get those sharp hits and breaks in the silhouette, right? This is just another one of those examples right through here. And I, I'm not sure about the mouth. I, I don't think I am a particularly big fan of it right now, so let's work on this whole area. Go real sharp with that that chin. Kind of pull out a, a line for the jaw. Very nice. Oh, and we'll also need to get <clears throat> some eyelids up in here in a brief moment. But we'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, focus on one thing at a time, right? Um, Got to get that neck where necks go. And that body maybe a little bit more where a body might be. Uh, for the body, you know what? I'm just going to cut this off now. Um, a couple different ways I could do that. Let's see. Let's just, let's just chop it up. Chop it up and hide it. The old sculpting trick. I don't want the body to, to be really any kind of focus here for this character. I want it all to be... Just about the face, because really with 30 minutes, what are you going to do? That's hardly any time to, to get anything done. But we will try all the same. All right. So this mouth, what can we do with this mouth to make the shapes here a little more interesting? Old people, old people, huh? <laughs> Not all old people, but the old the old people I'm trying to make, I'm thinking maybe like a little bit of a of a pushed in shape here for that bottom lip. Kind of like they're missing some teeth. The the whole shape of the mouth in general for humans, for humans, <laughs> for for people with teeth is <laughs> is a little more rounded because of the teeth. But if uh, a person does not have any teeth, then they would have the lips kind of concaved in or pushed in a little bit. Which could be a cool shape here, maybe. We'll see. I can't go too big brain in terms of uh, thinking about this stuff. Not with this time constraint. Let's see. We'll come back to that mouth in just a moment. Let's 
take a look at a couple other shapes here. Just getting this eye corner a little bit closer to where it might actually be. And you know what? We're gonna need some eyelids. I believe I mentioned that already. Let's do that super fast. Uh, for that, we'll just reuse this eyeball. Spin it around, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Anytime you can repurpose geometry like I did for the, uh, the head and the eye like I'm doing right now. So that is now my eyelid. Uh, anytime you can do something like this, I think that is a really good use of your time. Repurpose as much as you can. Work smarter, not harder. But also work harder, right? <laughs> Kind of both. Uh, let's go for a thicker shape. We don't want that to be perfectly um, in line with the eyeball. Something like that will do nicely. And we'll just center that little pivot point one more time. Try to find a nice angle here for that top lid. Stick with that kind of angry vibe that we had before, and then I'll just be lazy and kind of move it all over the place. <laughs> it's trying to be a little more exact there with my rotations, but now I'm just like, ah, I can't spend too much time on that eyelid. Should I add some color to this? That is a fantastic question. I don't know if I'll have time here. We might. Real fast. Let's, uh, let's paint the eyes at least. I think getting some color on your eyes is actually a really nice way to just judge proportions and the character in general. It's really hard to, um, to work on a character when, when they don't have color. A lot of that expression comes from the eyes and mouth, and when you're lacking that entirely, it's, it's a little bit awkward. Uh, in terms of the proportion here, if I can press the correct key, there we go. Some beady eyes, definitely the way to go. I will rotate those around. And of course, he's up to something, as all old people are. So we'll get him looking down at whatever he's doing there, whatever nefarious thing he's up to. If I can rotate that, that would be awesome. Yeah, that'll be close enough. We'll just squash it into place. And adjust that shape. All right, a little bit too much time on the eyes, I think. So let's go ahead and move on. I'll do some uh, very quick eyebrows for that. I will once again just repurpose the geometry that I already have and use a simple extraction method here. So just using a mask to create a piece of geometry, lowering the resolution of that geometry. Very simple process for people here. And then some extrusions wherever, there it is wherever we can find that. Uh, all right, so I have actually a lot of sharp shapes on, on this guy. So in terms of shape language, I think I'll try to just repeat that uh, a little more here in a couple areas for the brow, and then we'll move on from there. So a couple sharp shapes there for the eyebrow. Not a huge fan of it, but maybe we can return to it. Oh, and you know what? That shape, he kind of lost his like little evil evil, menace, whatever you want to call it. All right. Try not to get caught up here too much in the details. Let's try to position this, maybe make it a little bit larger. He's got a really big schnoz, so let's give him maybe a really big ear. And is there a way that I can get some of this shape language into this ear. Potentially, potentially some sharper angles there. 
And if during this process you want to follow along and try to replicate what I'm doing, feel free to. But um, in all honesty, I, I recommend, you know, just trying to create your own little head. Start off with a basic idea, create some general shapes, and then get to it. No reason to uh, create the exact same thing I am. I'm just going to start combining stuff now. Getting close to the, the end here. So we'll just combine everything up for the most part. Let's see. Let's rotate these eyelids. There we go. We got it back. We found it. <laughs> merge some shapes together. We'll merge the neck together with the head as well. Merging all the things. And then it's just a matter of a little bit more sculpting and blending in a couple areas. Obviously here around our nose some softening and playing around here around the eyes shouldn't matter too much I, I still you know I don't know how I feel about that mouth but I am going to I think have to let it be what we got is what we got at this point although I will do a little trick here to make this corner a little more tight. Try not to make him look too catty. Uh, anything else we want to do here with this expression before I start adding some quick color to the character? You know what? Let's duplicate one of these guys here. A little trick with eyebrows. Float them off the surface. A little something like that. Trying to work fast. I think we're at around the 20 minute mark, it looks like. So, 10 minutes left. Can we go thicker? Absolutely. Good question. Can always get a few more C's on the end of that thick. All right. Not half bad. Not half good either. Uh, okay, so we did combine all of that stuff for the face. Beautiful. We love it. He's perfect. Uh, now let's just make it a little easier to work with. So I've combined all of my little separate pieces of geometry, and now it's just a matter of uh, blending between them. To make that easier, I have, uh, I have recreated my subdivision levels, which are these things that let me step up and down in resolution. Very handy to have these, but you can't always have them, especially if you're wanting to do what are called Boolean operations, which is the combining of, uh, of different pieces of geometry. This neck is like really freaking out down here, getting a bacon neck, but honestly, that's maybe one of those happy accidents, and we can kind of let it be. A little bit. Just trying to give them some kind of shape down here. Maybe come back to that. Let's see about some color. Maybe some uh, some more hair here. Okay, okay, there we go. Also, it's a lot easier to manipulate your geometry when you have less of it. Less polygons you got. Easier it is to work with. Great rule of thumb. He's getting a little, uh, again, bird-like, like a bird of prey here. And I, I kind of like it. I'm kind of into it. So uh, in terms of silhouette, we're getting a pretty cool shape there. All about silhouette. Especially when you're talking about 30 minutes of sculpting. Um, cool for the jaw. I'm into it. Nice straight line. Really sharp face. Some rounded forms here and there. Uh, maybe like a little bit of hair on the backside. Something nice and quick. Get a little bit of uh, some taper. One of those nice fundamentals that we always want to pay attention to. So something like that. I'll probably add some more form to that in just a brief moment. But let's grab some quick paint to apply to our 
rather quick character right around there. So there are a lot of different techniques for paint. I like to just start with a quick base color and I kind of choose that at random here. This is pretty saturated. And then I kind of overpaint a lot of stuff. Um, I'm definitely going to overpaint this nose and the ears. Kind of make them look a little bit like a clown, but it will make sense here in a moment. So it's okay to start off pretty strong here. Looking a little too jaundiced, a little too goblinoid. Okay, something like that. Sure, that will probably be okay. Grab some lighter color, lighter value, I should say, and just try to paint this in a couple areas that are maybe a little more bony, right around that brow. And then what I'm going to do is neutralize this color. What that essentially means is I'm just going to sample my skin tone one more time, find like a, a little bit of a lighter value, and just kind of infill it a little bit, just a, a few times. I still like the, the kind of exaggerated color scheme, so I'll keep some of that, but that's uh, a lot closer to what I'm looking for, I think. And uh, we can continue to paint on this, especially here around the mouth. Get some more colors in, like in the saturation around the eyes. We can maybe clean up some of the shape. Everything at this point is kind of just finishing touches on top of what we've already made. So kind of clean up. Clean up Isle Folygon. But don't ever be afraid to go through and make big changes if you want. So what if we, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> what if we lowered the cheeks some, got like real droopy with those. Looks a little more sweet, more friendly. Do we want more friendly though? I don't know. He, he he's, he's kind of a creepy. He's kind of a creepy. And I kind of like it. So we'll keep uh, keep the creepy trend rolling. Uh, we'll just give him a nice, clean. What kind of what color shirt would he wear? Like a bluish, a navy. You like navy, old man? Uh, I will just use a quick little cheat brush here to insert a collar. How many times are we gonna have to tell you, old man? Collars are a little tough to make. Not something that I can do super fast here. So I think um, you'll have to forgive me for cheating. Old people wear collar shirts. It's true. If you wear a collared shirt, you're, you're an old person. It's just a fact of life. Can't deny it. And why make body when we can just pretend he have body with a little bit of paint in there? Sure. Yeah, I'm into it. Hey, <laughs> uh, I'm seeing 28 minutes on my clock. So you know what? Uh, let's just do some quick finishing touches. See what we can come up with. All right. Um, and for all of those quick little ending touches, I'm going to turn off uh, symmetry. So no more symmetry. So I'm not going to give him uh, much of an expression, but he's, he's kind of a fun little character real quick here. So, um, you know, any, any last minute things. Um, I like the idea of him looking off to the side a little bit maybe. So I'll just change the direction that the eyes are looking ever so slightly. Your eyes don't look directly the same way. Um, Probably a bad time for a quick lesson, but uh, they they do look a little bit off center, like what we got going on here. Unless you're looking at something really close to your face, then you look cross-eyed. Oh no, he's getting sweet again. No, he's got to be he's got to be wide-eyed and and a little scary. How do you how do you make something scary? How do you make something mean? You gotta lower the brows. You gotta make them look like they're angry. Hard to do a lot of expression here. 
in just a couple minutes, but can we go a little more wide-eyed? Ah, nah, not too much. Start to lose, lose the original expression. All right, let's see if I can just push those eyes down a little more, just a wee bit. Ah, see, this is what happens. You start just a 30-minute doodle, and then you're like, oh, you know, I'll spend just a little longer on it, and then it's an hour, and then it's two hours, and three hours, and we can't have that. We got to keep this within the realm of, of doodle. So... Just a little bit of a brush stroke here and there on the back of the hair. Kind of blend that into the head a little. Something like that. Maybe a little bit bigger so you can see it from the front. Maybe a little too big. I'll just pull it forward instead. Friar Tom over here. Not gonna do really anything to the brows, just gonna kinda do the same little rough texture. Yeah, that's hair, sure. Beautiful strokes of hair. Couldn't be any better. Absolutely not. Now, I actually kind of like how messy those are getting, but I would like to combine those and then just kinda soften them. Kind of soften them a little bit. And then um, then what we'll do, I'm going to grab the, the tips of these beautiful, luscious locks. I'm going to blur that mask. And, whoa, well, try to deflate on them. It looks like they, uh, they inverted a little bit. I'll fix that real fast here. Just trying to make them sharper, not have them die. Completely. All right. I just wanted that kind of sharper effect there for those shapes. I thought that was kind of fun. But hey, uh, <laughs> I think that is going to be it in terms of our quick little doodle. I'm seeing 33 minutes on my clock, so, you know, I cheated a little bit. But um, yeah, there he is. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed getting to check out my quick little uh, morning warm up here of a sculpt. Check out my links below for my Patreon, which is where you can join my Discord community, as well as get monthly tutorials and kind of see what I'm working on behind the scenes in terms of bigger projects. I also have my Gumroad, which is where you can download some tutorials, brushes, um, you know, my custom brushes that I use here for sculpting, all sorts of cool stuff. And if you're interested in some mentorship, you can also check out the Appeal Academy. If you guys have ideas for other little morning warm-ups I could do or, or anything that you guys are interested in learning or seeing me sculpt, let me know down below in the comments, and uh, I'll see you maybe in a future little warm-up doodle just like this one. All right, until the next one, I'll see you guys.